our guest co-host for today is an Emirati surgeon passionate about breast cancer awareness and destigmatizing the conversation around it. Here to share some important information about the most common type of cancer across the globe, please welcome Dr. Hareya Kazim. I mean, you're the best of the best. We love having you on the show, and I think I've been interviewing you for 15 years. Oh, thank you for back in the days. Again. <laughs> yeah, we're so we're so happy to have you here. Now, I just want to start by asking. I think 15 years ago, when we first started having this conversation, we often talked about the taboos that surrounded um, getting checked yes. and and breast cancer awareness. How has it evolved? Oh since my then? gosh, so completely. Uh, different now. I mean, I'm amazed when uh, October rolls around and you see these pink buses with the word breast on it. Uh, and to think that, you know, when I came back to Dubai 25 years ago, I couldn't even call myself a breast surgeon. And when I tried to make some audiovisual um, material on breast self examination uh, for women, um, it was confiscated. You know, so it's amazing that um, we've co we've come a long way. Obviously, the the internet has helped uh, young people take information that they get online. They take it home to uh, their mothers and their grandmothers, and so to a certain degree, it's less taboo than it was before. But I think the fear that I always saw here, because historically women presented very late. Um, either because um, they, there was a lack of awareness or because they were too shy to go to a male surgeon because until I came there were no female surgeons and they were there was just so much fear because a woman with breast cancer would leave it and leave it and leave it until eventually it was too late and so this woman would then go on to to she'd succumb to her disease and so to everybody else who was watching this scene was that breast cancer equals death right. so there is so much fear that's still out there um, and that's been a real journey trying to remove the fear uh, Dr. Horea, first of all, it's great to have you back. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple questions for you. Do you think those taboos are still prevalent in our current society? And my other question to you is what strategies have been put in place to encourage women to go for these early screenings for early detection? Yeah, so they have, they're definitely it's still there. I mean, we still have in the whole region, it's not just Dubai, um, where we don't like to say the word cancer, so forget breast, but even the word cancer, you know, we, we talk about it as that disease, you know, because you don't say it because if you say it, you'll get it, okay. right? And when you think that, you know, the, the WHO figures now is one in three of us are going to get cancer at some point in our life, it's kind of crazy that, you know, nobody's afraid to say, I've got sugar or I'm hypertensive or, you know, we don't feel ashamed of it and we're certainly not fearful of it, but when it comes to, you know, saying cancer, so there's still definitely that that taboo uh, or of saying it and obviously you know you have to say it to address it so the first thing i did was you know if if it was a modesty thing was you know i, I was here so then i'm trying to now get women to come forward and have an examination without worrying that it's going to be a man doing it I tried to take away, um, I, I set up a clinic that's only staffed by women, for women. It's very comfortable and homey and not scary looking like a hospital or a clinic. And then when I started doing a lot of talks, so I'd go off um, talking to schools and colleges, um, women's groups, and obviously, as I said, you know, the internet was there and so the information I was giving was, was available publicly. But what I would do in these talks is take a breast cancer survivor with me um, and preferably somebody from here so that was such a powerful message that when they could see somebody who looks like them um, who's had cancer who's um, finished their treatment who now is back to work is taking care of their kids and looks to all intents and purposes normal so that is that's those are the things that we started doing just on a, on a grassroots level to try and uh, get women to just not be so fearful about checking themselves. And it is ama amazing the work you've done. It was, it's funny because you mentioned how it was more taboo back in the day, because uh, yesterday somebody said, 
are we allowed to say breast cancer on the radio? And I'm like, yeah, of course we can say breast cancer on the radio. It's a very serious thing. It is. Um, and you talk about the internet, you talk about more information. Yes. What do you, how do you feel about the government's role in this? Obviously, there's 100 free clinics opening up all over the UAE. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of initiatives, not just governments, but even like hotels, the Marriott, they've oh, got gosh. their Pinktober and everything. Do you think exactly. this all... Oh, there's so much. I mean, a lot of it, um, I'm not sure if it's meaningful, but it's still out there. And I think, you know, initially when all the pink ribbons and things would go up, people would kind of go, why are you wearing a pink ribbon? Well, that opens the conversation on, you know, have you heard of mammograms? Have you had a breast check today? And it's amazing that there's still women who don't do it. I've had women today who've come with their daughters and I'll say to the mom, have you had a breast check? And she'll go, no, no, but I'm fine. And I'm going, great, I want you to stay fine. <laughs> you, need to have, you need to have your breast checked. Now, can we talk about early detection for a moment yeah. here? Because I'm not sure if people understand the extent to which it can save your life, but also just save you from the hassles and the inconveniences and the, the, the spending and, and everything, the psychological yes. damage of, of undergoing all these treatments. Yes. What can early detection do for you? Yeah, so early detection obviously is, is, is where it's at. I mean, and it's, again, we come back to the culture of this part of the world. Um, people would go to a doctor or a dentist for example you go to a dentist if you had a toothache you didn't go every six months and have your teeth cleaned and check and make sure you have no cavities um, i tell women now look you wear a seat belt right you don't wait till you have an accident and then decide right i need to wear a seat belt so it's about just trying to find something before you find it so now we have um you know obviously we've had screening mammograms around but now we're actually using ai um, and we can pick things up so early. And, and obviously with most cancers, the earlier you pick it up, the more likely you are to survive that cancer. Uh, Dr. Huria, this is a very, very important topic and we have this entire episode dedicated just to that. So please stick around with us. There's lots more to discuss with you. Thank you. Time now for a quick break. Coming up, the conversation continues with another healthcare expert. Plus, we share details on the pink caravan and we're speaking to a cancer survivor. So please don't go anywhere. <laughs> 